Nestled in the heart of the English countryside is a fortified medieval manor left unchanged for the last 700 years. It's a fairy tale tower with breathtaking views of the Shropshire Hills, and I've come here today to shoot this fantastic location and see if I can get the most out of my camera with my old favourite lens, the Fujifilm 10 to 24mm. You know, Fuji cameras are pretty sharp to begin with. Um, in fact, some people say they're too sharp. The X-Trans sensor is, a, is, it has what feels like extra sharpening that some people just don't like. I, however, love them. And I know a lot of people out there, a lot of you guys watching right now, are gonna absolutely love the look of the Fujifilm cameras. But that draws a bit of a problem as well because some of the newer uh, cameras, the 40 megapixel cameras, the ones, or one of the ones that I've, I've got with me today, um, are said to not resolve some of the older lenses. Now, one of my favorite lenses for landscape photography is the 10 to 24. It was, at least on the X-T3, a gloriously sharp lens. And I was a bit worried that that lens wouldn't actually work very well with the new 40 megapixel sensor. So I've come here today to this wonderful location to see if I, to see what it's like, but also to test out this little hack that's meant to give your photos more sharpness. Will it work? I don't know. I'm going to find out today. First, I have to find a composition. This is, of course, Stokesy Castle. It's an English heritage-run property, so I have to contend with other people and make sure that I'm not getting in anybody's way. But as I approach the manor, I have to start by looking at the impressive North Tower. So I've got to tell you what this hack is as well, haven't I? Well, it came uh, from a comment that I had on a previous video, a guy called Johnny Taylor. And uh, he said he had seen on a forum somewhere that if you take the noise reduction in the camera and you turn it down to minus four, then you will get sharper images. And what I was thinking is, okay, but that just really just adds in noise into the frame. And if you knew, know anything about uh, sharpening uh, in Photoshop, you'll know that sometimes people will add grain into a photo to make it look sharper than it actually is. So is that what's happening? I don't know. The other thing that I saw on a different video altogether was if you turn down the noise, like we've just been saying, and if you turn down the sharpness to minus four, that gives you a substantially sharper image than what you would have had if they were both set to zero. So I'm gonna try both of those things out today and see what we can get. Okay, so I found a composition. Now, bear with me for a second. I'm sorry if this is very windy here today. Uh, it really is. Let me walk you through what I've got. I'm hand-holding everything today, uh, but what I've actually got here is a very simple composition where the main sort of gatehouse building is on the left, and that gatehouse building has a lot of different shades in it, right from sort of proper black all the way through to uh, the church on the right-hand side, uh, which has got some really very light tones in it, uh, all the way to some, some white bricks and stuff. So we should get a good range of color in here. Uh, uh, which means that we can have a look at the colors, we can have a look at the dark bits and see if that works. Um, and actually it's quite a nice photo using the kind of rule of thirds. And we're gonna do all of these hacks. So the very first one I'm gonna do, uh, I've got to put this into stills mode, which I've got it on right now. I'm at uh, 2,000 of a second, because it's really, really bright out today. There's a lot of sun around today. Uh, I'm on F8, which means we'll get most of the things in frame sharp. And I'm not at 10 mil, uh, I'm going to pull that in just a little bit. I'm a little, just just off 10 mil, and that's our first picture. I'm actually focusing on the uh, window uh, on the far right hand side because I want to get as much of this uh, in uh, in focus as possible. Um, nice lens to do it with as well. Uh, so we'll see how those turn out. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. Well, I mean, it kind of works, but there's this massive caveat to it. However, hold on for a bit because I want to share something with you about Fuji sharpness that might change things. Firstly, if we take a look at the raw files, we can see that these changes don't actually get baked into the raw file. Now, I didn't know this when I first heard about this, so I had to try it out and make sure. 
Here are the raw files that, so that you can see for yourself. I've done nothing to these other than uh, loading them into Lightroom, applying nostalgic neg. And if we zoom into the window area where we, we were focusing, you'll notice that both images look about as sharp as one another. So if you're just shooting in raw, this hack doesn't work. But wait. I know a lot of people out there use Fuji because they like the JPEG output. And in that instance, this hack can make a difference. Let's start off by looking at the out of the camera JPEGs for the default image and the one where both settings were turned down. Disappointingly, when we zoom in, you can see that the processed image is significantly softer than the original. But that's not the case when we just turn down the high ISO noise reduction to minus four. Here we have those two images, and if we look at the detail on the wood, we can see that the texture is more pronounced in the second image. Now doing this does add some grain into the image as well, so if you want to uh, use this hack for yourself, you might want to experiment with other values to see what works best for you. Similarly, I've now seen this working on a video as well, which of course does get baked into the file. So this might be an idea for video shooters to take a look at if they feel their images aren't quite sharp enough. But that doesn't really solve the sharpness problem for a lot of people. However, maybe this will. First of all, I've got to say, I am really zooming into these images and I am nitpicking over tiny details that I would likely not even worry about on a normal shoot. I'm pushing this further than I would normally go so that I know I haven't scrimped on testing it at all. Usually I would be happy with the sharpness of this image. However, on another video, I did hear from a, a YouTuber called Edward Martins, who said that he'd been processing images with Capture One, and it was handling the 40 megapixel sensor better than Lightroom. This is kind of consistent with what we already know. Lightroom does struggle with the X-Trans sensor, and I'm not sure that they're going to be doing anything about it anytime soon. So I grabbed the free Fuji version of Capture One to see what it looked like. I was very pleasantly surprised. The image on the left is the one from Lightroom, the one on the right is from Capture One, and let's zoom in now. I, I don't know how well you can see this because YouTube has this weird compression algorithm, but the file on the right looks to me a lot sharper, and it appears to have handled the grain a lot better as well. This was on the default sharpening in Capture One of 160, and that got me thinking. You see, the standard sharpening applied to Lightroom is 40. Can it be that, because of the bigger sensor size or whatever, we just need to bump up the default sharpening inside Lightroom to start getting great results? Unfortunately, as you can see here, it doesn't quite work like that, uh, because then we start to see this worming effect creeping in again. It is a sharper image, but some of the quality is gone. Now, I thought that that was going to be the end to this video until Lightroom released their new Denoise AI feature. So the final image I wanted to show you today is the first uh, of the ones that I took, so no changes uh, to the camera, using uh, that Denoise and then sharpening the image to 150. Remember, Capture One sharpened to 160. I'm not sure if there's any correlation, but I wanted to see what happened. What we're left with is the best image of the lot. It's sharp, there's much better detail in the wood, and it's mostly clear of grain. So is that the true sharpening hack for Fuji cameras? Use Capture One, or if you don't want to miss out on Lightroom's functions, use AI denoise and sharpen it much more than you normally would for other cameras. Now, as a caveat to all of this, you could also use Topaz or DxO if you wanted to. Um, I don't know why the team behind Lightroom have ignored the X-Trans sensor for such a long time. After all, it's been around since 2012. Perhaps this is just something that we have to either live with or jump ship to something like Capture One. But as you can see from these results, the problem here doesn't seem to be with the lens as much as with the processing. Certainly straight out of the camera, I'm not seeing a significant loss of sharpness that would make me want to switch back to a new lens. But I have found several options that have meant that I don't have to consider switching. That's what I think anyway. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to find out more about Lightroom's new denoise, uh, maybe check out this video here too. That's it for this video though. I hope you've enjoyed yourself and I'd like to see you in the next one if you'd like to come along. Until next time, keep taking those photos.